And hey, we're back. Welcome all. Welcome all. It is the end of the year. Welcome to our top 10 video. This is the Criticorp. I am Jordy. I am joined by Eric and Toke. Say hi, boys. How's it going, y'all? And we are here to do our top 10s of the year. Um, it's going to be simple. We're going to first do our 10 through 6, and we're each going to rotate, and then we're going to do our top 5 afterwards. So let's get right to this and waste no time. I will go ahead and kick this off with my 10 through 6. So at number 10 for me, I got The Menu, Ray Fiennes in the suspense thriller. Um, I thought this was a fun time. It was a mystery. Um, some of the reveals were really cool. The dialogue was really witty. Um, just a really good time overall. Can't recommend this one enough. Um, kind of snuck up on me. Didn't really know much about it beforehand, but fun time. At number nine for me, I got Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, Nick Cage, being Nick Cage, um, Pedro Pascal in there. Love the Paddington 2 references. Um, just that one was a delight. The bromance was unreal, but not as good as another bromance I have higher in my list coming up. But that is for Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent at number nine. Number eight, coming in hot at Top Gun Maverick. Um, this one, everything that can be said about this movie has already been said. Um, the flight scenes are breathtaking. That last 30 to 40 minute sequence, absolutely unreal. Even when I rewatched it the other day on Paramount Plus, still got chills watching that part. Yeah, um, it's still so fucking wow. Anyways, <laughs> continue. <laughs> But Tom Cruise came back with a vengeance with this one. Um, Miles Teller was great as Rooster, right? Yes. All right. Um, Hangman was great. The whole cast was great. Loved it. Um, that is why it is my number eight. But it wasn't as breathtaking as going back to Pandora. My God, the 3D and the visual effects on this were unlike anything I have ever seen. Um, Jake Sully feels like a more fleshed out character. He's the leader of the tribe now. Um, just everything about this was just overwhelming from the visual standpoint, the sound design, just the massive scope of everything, the color palette. That is why that one is my number seven. Wait, nope, yeah, no, nope. um, oh. and then we're going to my number six with the Northman. My god, this was this thing. I love you. Thing. <laughs> when people talk about going <laughs> medieval, this is the movie. Yep. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> This shit was gnarly. It was a revenge tale that one showed you the negative aspects of trying to get revenge, but at the same time, they fulfilled on that shit as well at the end. That that fight on the volcano, fucking legendary. But that is my 10 through 6. I'm going to pass it over to Big Daddy Toke. All right, you guys. My, uh, we're going to get started off with number 10, that RRR, that shit, it was still, it was, it was like one of the most enjoyable movies out of, <clears throat> out of my top 10, all the unrealistic scenes were just so fucking, it was so wild and just crazy, like the shit they made them do, uh, the whole plot of it was just it was real it was real good and well directed like hats off to the director of that um he couldn't have done a better job the fucking brothership between them two was you know was a bromance we can yeah. all talk about it that was a bromance yeah. oh yeah yeah that shit was dope it was dope i loved it every moment of it but uh number nine will be Avatar. 
the way of water. It was uh, despite the uh the twenty minutes I fell asleep, <laughs> you know. Yeah, uh, it was it was it was fucking. It was, it was it was a well anticipated movie. It was a well anticipated movie. I I fucking loved every moment of it. It was um, it was good to see all the stars back. You know, fucking decades later, I can't wait to see the other fucking uh and that's two three and four and where the way they go with it because you know they're gonna fucking they're gonna have more kids there's gonna be more tribes like this is just the beginning this man is... this material want more kids <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry continue uh <laughs> number okay there's blue pale eyes boy now let me tell you that man, Christian Bell, ate. He ate my son. He ate. He was a fucking bro. That's why I had to swap out glass on you. I had to swap it out. He did his thing. He he out he out did Daniel Craig. I'm sorry. Oh wow. Sorry. I haven't seen uh, Pale Blue Eye, but I'm sorry. Ooh. Humor humor wise, no. But serious wise. Well, yeah, they're two very different tones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but still, Al, he he did his thing as a detective, for sure. Is. Wow, dude that played fucking Alan Poe, Harry Mellon, he he fucking outdid himself in that role. That was that was like, you know, I I didn't expect that. That was unexpected. Of me. I mean, to see for him, at least. Fucking um, it was just a nice, simple film. It wasn't nothing too spectacular. It wasn't. It didn't go a lot of places. It was only like three or four settings, but it was it was good acting for sure. It was well directed. Um, number seven is the uh, right on that number six. I'm sorry, is Bullet Train. No, cool. no, I'm bad. I'm sorry. Number six. Number six. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking too much. I'm blow last. Right, I'm blow. But yeah, number seven is Bullet Train. Bullet Train. We are, we already know about that one, man. That shit. He's a fucking diesel. You know. A lot of <laughs> that shit. Hey, man, bro. Let's go, Tangerine. Diesel. That shit. That shit was too good. I seen that shit three times. Or maybe I, I can't even count now. It was, it was they had too much fun with that movie. Too many good actors in it. Well directed. The dialogue was all there. The bad stories to everybody was fucking phenomenal. It all tied in. You know, even you know, the fucking little the snake, bro. They had a bad story for the snake in the water. The fucking water. Like that shit. Yeah. Had me dead, bro. Everything goes. And he dead as fuck. But yeah, we as I said, we already know about Bullet Train. That's just, that's that's gonna be done as a classic. For sure. Is. Yeah, this man Jordy pulled it out of his top ten. So, besides that, <sighs> number six, the motherfucking man Cruz. Top gun. Sorry, he didn't make my top five, but he fucking. At least it was more respectful of having it higher than Jordy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy, Juicy Cruz, bro. I don't know how this man go. He either gonna die on set or like <laughs> die from fucking doing one of his stunts, bro. Having a heart attack trying to do a stunt, but this man, I do not know when he gonna give it up. I don't know when he gonna give it up. But mm -hmm. He got another mission possible coming out. Like Looks this deadly. Man, this man, bro. And the way he came out too, snacking, snapping, snapping on them in that old, the old plane, the mag. What was it? The mag what? Fourteen or some shit like that. I can't even remember. I didn't even see which one you're talking about. Well, damn, when they when they was in the old plane. Oh, old school. In the, oh, at the end of Maverick in yeah. the F 
My dumbass. My yeah, bro. What was he that World War II plane that they were in at the end? He showed them boys up in that boat. Because they were in F-18s that they were flying. Wait, what did you say? What was the World War II plane that they had at the end? The Mustang, I think. Oh, that he was, like, building in the yeah. beginning at the end? Yeah, I think that was the old P-51. Yeah, yeah. bro. He literally, the true definition of it don't matter what year it is, the driver. <laughs> behind the wheel, bro. He whipped that bit. He didn't have a uh, nah. best co pilot either. Rooster didn't fully know how to operate everything in the back. <laughs> Literally, bro. Showing him the ropes. Mm -hmm. no, he was, like I said, he's the man. Maverick. Oh, gee, they brought him back for a reason. <laughs> Ice, Ice, Ice brought him back for a reason. What? I'm going to hand it off to my next <sighs> co-host. Eric, thank Clark, you, boy. Get it, So, I got uh, my 10th movie is Northman. Just because uh, I do love the visuals. The story, I was good. It was just, uh, I don't know. I wanted more of it at the end when he was all, like, beat down. And he still went, like, charging in. It's like, bro, why don't you, like, tie up what, like one of those wounds that like are near an artery that you're gushing blood out and maybe you'll have like a little bit of a fighting chance <laughs> you know so that's why it's at my number 10 because it's my only gripe with the story but it's still an issue then moving on I got unbearable weight of massive talent at my number 9 because I do love that movie the Man, you said the Paddington 2 references. To me, that's like Marcel Michelle for us, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. That's what I think it would relate to best. <laughs> so, <laughs> I absolutely love it. I love the steel book you got me, my guy. Thank you. Christmas was a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> Moving forward to number eight. Bullet Train. I've rewatched this movie so many times. It's easily a four star movie for me. Yeah, the ending, like with the train kind of crashing, is a little bit like it's way far stretched. I will put it to you that way. But I think it's like one of the most solid movies all around. I loved all the backstories to everything building. The subtle, like little bits of dark humor splashed in there were magnificent. So yeah, I think it deserves to be there. Um, what the hell is my dog eating? <laughs> uh, squeaker. Lovely. <laughs> I'm like, he's, he seems like he's going to town or anything. What am I at now? Number seven. R, R, R. Oof, man, the story arc of this movie, beautiful. I never thought I would love a Bollywood film like this Damn. i'll never shoot fire this <laughs> this was wonderful i watched this one like two or three times in it it's in another language for i don't know like 70 percent of it hindu or hindi yeah yeah so would you say like 70 percent of it's another language and it's still like no they speak in english I was thinking it was like it was like a good ten percent. Some of the people though. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, it was still a really, really good movie. I enjoyed it and yeah. It deserves to be in the top five, but I just there was some better movies that came out and I couldn't push it up higher. Uh, number six, 13 Lives, a movie that Jordy recommended to us all and is the only one in the group to still not watch that is a fact that is a fact all right i think that is just absolute shit <laughs> wanker <laughs> wanker. Anyway. wanker 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 that movie was amazing it was a true story and it was based on like those 12 like Thai soccer boys that were trapped in this cave. And they actually used 
real divers for it. So the actors in the movie did all the diving scenes. So all the diving scenes that you see are live, like from their cameras. And one of the things that they were saying they had the biggest trouble with was getting the cameras through some of these tight spaces with all of their like oxygen and everything. And seeing it all portrayed out, like I've been in water my whole entire life and I don't ever think like I was claustrophobic. Man, watching this, I was just like feeling my t like chest tight in and oh, I couldn't imagine it. That's a lot to handle. I think you guys still need to see it. Like you saw it, but you need to see it, Jordy. I definitely yeah. do, yes. That movie was crazy. All the you want to talk about like visual scenes. I'm a huge fan for if it's shot live action. Yeah. Like Top Gun Maverick, they used real camera angles in the planes. Like 13 lives, real cameras underwater. Yeah, that's, a, wow. that's why it's gonna hold up for me. But kicking it back to you, Jordy. Bring them to your top five. All right, so we are on to my top five. Kicking it off at number five, Detective LeBlanc. Detective Blanc is back on the case in the Glass Onion. I love this series so much. It is so much fun. Um, again, another great ensemble cast. You got Dave Bautista joining this one. You got fucking who else? Um I'm drawing a blank on all these names right now. Kate Look, Hudson. Kate uh, Hudson. You Janelle have Monet, Edward Norton. Hey, yeah, Edward Norton. Janelle Monet, Catherine Hahn, Leslie Odom Jr., um, Jessica Henwick. This cast is loaded. It is a fun time. The dialogue is witty, almost like Bullet Train, but a little bit more comedic even. And Daniel Craig looks like he's having a great time with this after doing Bond for all those years. So, oh, yeah. Love this movie. Highly recommend. Um, but moving on to my number four. Did anybody think that movie was predictable, though, a little bit? A little bit. I like. I didn't know that I, she had a twin. I didn't know she had a twin. Yeah, that, that blew me yeah. like way over. But I knew it was him. I kind of figured it was him. Yeah. Yeah. But I had a fun enough time to where I wasn't even like trying to guess who it was or anything. I was just along for the ride. The oh, dialogue right. and this everything. Is he's not trying to guess who it is. Guy <laughs> kills me. Call near number four. <laughs> but anyway, on to number four. We got RRR. Fucking love this movie. This is the bromance I was talking about. It's Hollywood finally breaking through into the mainstream. Um, you got this historical backdrop while also having this over the top action and comedy and all these different genres meshed into one you have some of the best dance numbers from these badass action not to, not to. <laughs> dude like the entire thing just great um highly recommend this year for original films has been great um but on to the next one we are in my top three these are the three that stood above the rest um, and we're kicking it off with the Batman. We got Robert Pattinson taking over the Cape Cowl. Um, what can I say? Paul Dano as the Riddler, fucking spectacular. Colin Farrell as the Penguin. Matt Reeves directing, taking the helm. Um, Michael Giacchino with the uh, score. Everything about this was phenomenal. It reminded me a ton of the Arkham games and some of the animated series. It was so great seeing this. It had to make my top three. Um, but on to number two, which one of us hasn't seen here while we're picking on people who haven't seen shit. Uh, oh, we're yeah, talking yeah. about the most badass of characters of 2022. Marcel, the shell with shoes on. 
Let's go, Marcel. This guy, he makes the best out of any situation. He is positivity in a shell. Um, this guy, I would go to war for him. I sign all my letters war. Let the battle begin. <laughs> Marcel. <laughs> um, the, it's not anything crazy in terms of story, but this movie is so hard hitting with the emotions. Um, you got Nana Connie, who my heart breaks for that woman. Um, and she is foreign. She's from the garage. So she has an accent. Yep. It all makes sense. <laughs> Full circle. But on the topic of A24, that brings us to my number one movie of the year, which obviously has to go to everything, everywhere, all at once. Since the time I saw that movie, it was number two on my list. But over time, I had to bump it over the Batman and eventually it just stayed there at that number one spot. Um, there is nothing that I can say about that movie that other people haven't <laughs> really touched on at this point. You got the Daniels directing, you got Michelle Yeoh, Ki Hoi Kwan coming back for his first role since like the Goonies and Indiana Jones. Um, Still counting the exact same. <laughs> oh yeah dude and he carries a good load of this movie too when explaining what's going on all of the um dialogue that he has the action scenes that he has it reminds me of some jackie chan type shit especially when he's using <clears throat> um, this movie is a triumph i fucking love this thing i will rewatch this more than any other movie probably up there with dune and ah i just i was gonna say are you gonna rewatch it more than dune my guy it's gonna be up there i don't think as much as dune but it will be up there i love this you got jenny slate even who played you know the girl who had the dog yeah the actress she's the one who voices marcel yeah jenny slate that's funny but anyways, that's it for my top 10. I'm going to pass it over to Toke to finish off with his top five. Alrighty, guys. My first top five is everything, everywhere, all at once. Following up with Jordy, man. It was fucking, yeah. They were everywhere, but nowhere. It was, it was like Fucking wow, like they <laughs> literally like man, it just still blows my mind every time I watch it. I still fucking see shit and grabs other shit as I watch it. You know, I learn something new every time I watch it. It's fucking wow, it's mind blowing. The the way they thought this up with the whole, you know, doing weird shit to fucking trigger the you know, the next nice multiverse fucking, of the year. Yeah. Yeah, and that's multiverse shit. Like, it was just, no, it was crazy. It was wild. I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect, you know, from the cover, just from seeing the, the you know, movie cover, it was going to be something like that. It was a small film, you know, it wasn't really in much uh, big theaters. But it was fucking, yeah. It was, it was it was well underappreciated, but it should have it should have got more. They got his flowers way more. For sure. It's mm -hmm. Well deserved. Um, number four. My baby Lydia Todd. <laughs> yeah, just... I haven't seen it yet. Man. Neither of us have seen this one. Uh, y'all sleeping. Bro, you refuse to see my son the show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a good point, bro. Okay, you had a good point. Hey, Blanche, Blanche, she did her fucking thing as, you know, the lead star actress, Lydia Tarr. Fucking a music, well-known music conductor, showing her, you know, her struggles as she's, you know, on the come up. 
on her big debut with her fucking um orchestra. It's just, you know, it's just, it shows you that, you know, you got to be humble or, you, you know, it's all that. Because you, you can lose it all in that quick. It's just like that. It's fucking wild. That movie's, man, it's just so clean. The, the music, the music in it, the orchestra was, was actually a live orchestra. Like, that wasn't, you know, fake. That was, that was all live. Like, man, it was so clean. It was so beautiful. Straight out of the tear. You know, but, uh, no, for my number three, actually wearing a shirt, my man Luffy. <laughs> my man Luffy, Monkey D, boy, D, Luffy, the king, the pirate king. He's the true boy. I'm actually, I got to catch up. I'm on like episode. I got to see three new episodes, 1045, I believe. And that's why we haven't watched the movie. <laughs> I don't know. watch the movie. I mean, I should watch the movie, but you should. <laughs> you just talking about over a thousand episodes to catch up. No, no, no. Yeah, man. That, that boy, Luffy. Oh, my God. I don't care what nobody say. They can say all oh, Goku code. They can say all oh, Naruto. No, bro. Luffy, he literally pulls shit out of his ass. This nigga is made out of rubber. He reflects everything you throw at him. This nigga is stupid. He's, he's the most fucking stupid main character ever. He, he doesn't have no IQ, but he will beat your ass. <laughs> like, bro, I don't understand it. Sounds He's like stupid. what's his name from Jiu-Jitsu? The big... He's stupid. He's stupid, bro. Toto? Yeah. No, no Toto's great. No, it's <laughs> Matt Luffy on another level, bro. He'll yeah, fall asleep. Man, speaking of which, Jiu-Jitsu dropped way down for you. I know, bro. I'm sad. It's, it's still there. It's like in my top 15. Especially 15. But that, 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 that red, that one piece red took over. That one piece red took over. Shane's, the whole story of his daughter. Wow, bro, her fucking power. She was, oh my gosh, she was untouchable. Literally, one note, your ass on the ground. Oh no, he on the ground, bro. He in another whole world. He can't even touch him. He thought he touched him. That's just another form of it. <laughs> it's over, bro. It was over. It was all bad. Well, let me stop, right? Let me stop, right? I'm gonna get to my number two. Uh um fucking the Batman. The Batman, Robert Patterson, fucking he like I said. I got, like I said from the beginning, he did, he did do a real good Batman, but he did it in a different way from all the other Batmans. He was more of a detective. He, you know, he 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 got, he got answers and then beat ass. You know, he didn't just straight up just come beat your ass and then just get the answers. Like, you know. I mean, he beat some ass in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, yeah, yeah was, <laughs> Well, he, 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 made, he made sure it was well provoked. You know? <laughs> that man, he did, he, he did his thing. Fucking, he kind of like, he kind of, he kind of reminded me of like a Batman Beyond type of deal. But, um, oh, he could be the old Bruce Wayne in the future. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Most definitely can. Fucking, and then, uh, <clears throat> the way they had Zoe Kravitz's Catwoman was real good. Fucking Colin Charles, the Penguin. Like, all the, all the actors were A1. The story was good. It was a nice, dark setup scheme. The ending could have been a little bit better, but it was good. It was good. I liked it. I loved it. Seen it a zillion times. Uh, number one, you already know. Northman, I will kill you. I will avenge you. Like, man, 
Oh, yeah. What you mean? This man, it was pure vengeance of the roof from the top. When he came off the rib, grabbing the spear, jumping down. Man, he was on all, he was on all that, bro. It was over. This man back, he couldn't even sit straight. And he was always mad. He's sitting there. Ugh. Just jogging around, hating life, bro. <laughs> bro, that shit. It was so it was it was just so good. It was so good. Now, you want to talk about nice and simple? That was a good, nice, short, simple film. I don't think it was short, but Bro, it was like it was under hours, like hours and some minutes. It was almost two. Was I almost think it was. Two. I thought it was over two hours. No, nah, it was almost two. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, bro, that shit was real good. And then, like, everywhere they went with it, too, like, the whole little, like, dark magic, all that shit, it was real good. So, I'm going to pass it off, though, to my boy, Clock It Boy. Thank you, thank up you. Up real quick. So, I got uh, Avatar Way of Water jumping in at number five. I think that movie was just top notch. Sorry, my dog's eating something again. Um, Avatar Way of Water, I think, was beautiful. Just the scenery underneath the water was excellent. The fact that they waited 13 years for this movie to come out because they didn't want to release it until they could have technology to take these underwater camera films. Goat move. Proud of being the boys <laughs> and girls. <laughs> So I thought that was wonderful, guys. The cultural, uh, like, diversification that they showed, I thought was really unique and incredible. Um, oh, how back the in cities of Navi. Yeah, like, you're back in Pandora, but it's a whole different way because they're, like, evolutionary changes. Mm -hmm. Like, what makes them thrive in that civilization? How oh, there's the tree so, people and the water people. Yeah, so I thought that was really cool. So that's why it's at my number five. Number four, it was hard not to put it higher. Uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. This is the multiverse movie that we deserved this year. Nobody like asked for this one, but we fucking loved it and we needed it because Doctor Strange's Multiverse of Madness did not satisfy the multiversal scratch I needed. <laughs> this did excellently. Very proud of this one. It got me to think of things in a different way. I love their concept and technique of like verse jumping instead. Uh, Marcel the Shell is my number three. Marcel. Oh, that shell. I went into that movie being such a hater and I bought it like after I saw it. I, I went this I it. Yeah. The emotions that a shell made me witness just should never have happened but it did and i love that movie for it i'll keep popping it in you're a hater for never watching it number two the backed man robert pattinson after you said that i honestly think if he stuck with the batman role for like let's say 10 plus years then they wanted to do like a futuristic batman beyond and with great makeup and cgi age his face I could see him as like an old brooding Bruce Wayne for Batman Beyond. Oh, definitely. So that could be something to stay tuned for. But I did like the movie a lot. That was probably the most Gotham Gotham we've ever seen, as talked about in our previous videos. Go check it out if you want to hear more. But uh, moving it up to my number one, my baby, the love of my life, Top Gun, Maverick. Boys, you guys, you did better than he did. You're way too fucking low with this. Thank God for your woman for boosting this on your list. Because with <laughs> her, how low it was before, I just wanted to cry every single night. All right, this movie is perfection. Top Gun with Tom Cruise. He comes back with a vengeance, baby. He's hungry. He wants to fight. They shut him down. But does that actually shut down the man, the myth, the legend? No, it does not. Big spoiler alert. He's captain of the squadron and takes everybody home. It's beautiful. 
The camera angles in it are excellent. The fact that every actor had to go through flight training and the angles of the G-force on their face are real. Awesome. Name another movie that's going to put their actors through all that other than 13 Lives, but they hired people that were actually divers. These people were just actors that had to go through the training. Yeah. yeah. So that's why it's my number one. That was a baller movie. I got the steel book to prove it. I waited the longest for this movie to come, and I am proud of it to be here. That is my top five. Mm-hmm. I hope you guys appreciate Top Gun Maverick more than these chumps. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. Well, there you have it, people. That is our top 10 each of 2022. Um, let us know if you agree or disagree. I'm sure there's going to be some debate amongst a lot of film fans over all of these videos coming out on YouTube. Um, drop your top 10 down below. Let us know what you thought were the best movies of the year. Um, other than that, we're going to be dropping our worst list coming up soon um either tomorrow or the following day um but yeah stay tuned for that one that'll be a little bit more fun we'll also have our top uh 10 best shows of the year yes correct stay tuned for that also and we'll want to hear your feedback on that because we do love to binge and as always thank you for tuning in like and subscribe follow us into 2023 and let us kick off that year with a bang. Um, and again, if you guys have been watching a lot of our videos, thank you for tuning in for 2022. Um, most of you probably just that are our video, but we will try and put out better content so we can recoup a lot of you on more of these. But that is us signing off. Well, at least Jordy, you boys say good night. Have a good night, y'all. Toodles.